Okay, we are going to start. Still people coming in. So let's wait five or 10 seconds. More and more people coming. Okay, then I would say good afternoon to everyone out there. And uh, I would say good afternoon to every fan out there of an air handle unit in this webinar. Because we are really happy to see you all here and that you spend your time with us. Before I start, I want to say something that I, to be honest, I often say when I meet people that deal in somehow with air handling units or air handling systems, and that is that you can be very proud of what you do every day because an air handling unit does something wonderful. It ensures indoor life quality for people and it even does this with a minimum energy demand and you are responsible for that and that's a very great thing and therefore you can be very proud on what you do every day. And it's just great that you're here because that also shows that you want to develop yourself further to do even your job better in the future. So a warm welcome, it's great to see so many people. We are very happy to have you here. So I already welcomed you and now some practicalities. Um, here it's me, my name is Martin. Um, I'm the chairman of Eurovent's product group Air Handling Unit. Later I will say some more words about Eurovent and about the product group air handling units. But today we do not want to deal with people, we want to deal with technical topics and therefore um, this is just to show you who's talking to you right now. So now it comes to the practicalities. Um, uh, one, first information for you, you are muted. Um, that does not mean that you cannot ask questions. You can ask questions via the chat on the left picture or on the left side. At this slide you can see how that works. In the software tool that you have on your screen, you have a section where you can ask questions. If you want to leave the webinar, hopefully at the end and not in the meantime, you can of course do it, but we would highly appreciate to see you at the end of the webinar too. This webinar will be recorded and shared afterwards, so if you want to watch it again later, you have definitely the possibility to do so. Here the roadmap, we start with the introduction. Uh, point two is that we explain uh, the Eurovent recommendation quality criteria for air handling units. After that, we give an overview of the recommendation and how you can use it. Point four deals with main stability, and then we give a summary and a wrap up at the end. We have a questions and answers session. Today we have with us also Lawrence, Charlene and Orkun, but we represent the complete product group air handling unit that was involved during development of the paper. Also, very special thanks to the wonderful Eurovent team, to Andrea Gasparova, Igor Sikonchik, and Ngoni. They have wonderfully prepared that, although they are not active today, but they were very active in the background and they made this happen. So thanks for that and um, special thanks to the wonderful Eurovent team. In the meantime, I can also already say some words about the Eurovent Association, which is the largest association in Europe and uh, it deals with all um, the HVAC R technologies. So um, there are a lot of product groups doing their job in the field of Eurovent. Of course, there is um, also a vision that was developed by Eurovent and um, we have several product groups. One product group that we represent today is the product group air handling units. Now we are back to slide and the product group air handling units is the largest product, product group in the world of Eurovent and also worldwide the largest group that in somehow deals with air handling units. So now we talk about what is Eurovent again. Eurovent is, as said, a European non-profit organization. And there we bring together manufacturers from various sectors of the HVAC R industry. Of course, there is a mission and our mission at Eurovent is to foster energy efficient and sustainable HVAC R technologies with holistic conservation of other aspects, such as health and life protection, quality of work, safety and the promotion of a level playing field for the entire industry. So again, here I want to point out HVAC R is a wonderful thing and um, I'm very happy that we have you here. Uh, about the product group and the unit, I already said something in the meantime. Then we go further. What are the Eurovent key activities to achieve our objective? Um, we deal with advocacy, with technical things and with marketing things. And now I also give some examples about that. Here you can see um, some results of our technical activities. We have saw in the past or during the last years, we have published technical 
things and helpful documents. Here you have some examples. One example is uh, a document that deals with air leakages in air handling units. We have published a paper that deals with corrosion protection. Control systems for air handling unit is also a document which is very, very helpful and informative. And uh, today's topic is quality criteria for air handling units. And of course, for that, we have also developed a paper where you find a lot of useful information. If you know people that start with air handling units at a very early stage and that do not know so many things about air handling units, we have developed the Eurovent guidebook for air handling units a couple of years ago. It provides quite easy information for people that come in touch with air handling units in the early beginning. So we have some basic information about what an air handling unit is, why it is the most wonderful thing on earth and why um, it does a great job in many buildings. Here's some information and some uh, examples for advocacy activities. Here you can see that we, of course, try to impact EU legislation in a positive and thinking forward way. Um, when it comes to European Commission and handling units, you probably think um, of the ventilation units regulation. This comes from the Eco Design Directive, and of course, we supported European Commission here to develop this the regulation in the early beginnings so for the first version and also the revision is supported by the product group and the unit. Of course, we also work in the world of standards and we propose amendments to several standards. Here's just one example. Okay, and now I have the honor to introduce to you a wonderful person, Mr. Lawrence Higginson. Great that you are here and that you also present that's the next session of this webinar. Thank you very much, Martin. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Lawrence, and I think an important point is to insist on why is good ventilation such an important thing. Um, Martin stressed it. We're really, really lucky in our industry. Um, if we deliver good products, if we do a good job, we impact human health, um, we improve productivity, we offer people a good place to work inside buildings, which is at the end of the day, what a building is all about. Um, we can do that also by protecting the building itself and making it an asset that will last for many, many years. And if done properly, we can do this with a very efficient uh, energy cost in the use phase. If we look at the future of ventilation in Europe, um, Europe's direction of travel is clearly towards efficiency and sustainability. And that doesn't look like it's going away. Um, the standards, be it on equipment efficiency or on air quality, are probably the best in the world. Um, and when we talk about sustainability, we really believe in the product group that uh, one thing is to not replace an equipment in every 10 years. Um, these units can last for decades if properly designed and properly maintained. And I think that's a very good example of sustainability. Uh, the second one is also to maintain the performance of these equipments over time. And we believe these are two very good examples and concrete ones that we work towards in the area of responsible use of resources. What we also see is these air handling units have become more and more complex over time, uh, especially in the last decade. And this can sometimes um, lead to misunderstandings on how they work, uh, misuse. Um, like I said, these are equipments that last or should last for decades. So any choices made in the initial phase of investment will impact operating costs for a very, very long time. Um, and that's why we saw great value in helping uh, investors, designers, building owners in really making the right choices, um, ensuring that these equipment fulfill their requirements. And often the requirements are different from one project to another, from one country to another. And the aim has always been in this product group to really have a customer centric approach. So really to look at the customer requirements and make our material understandable for, for our customers. I now have the great pleasure to hand over to Charlene, who is co-author and uh, editorial leader of the document that we're presenting today. And she will dive into how this document is built and why it's built like this. Over to you, Charlene. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Lawrence, for the introduction. I will give you a short overview of the recommendation and the way to use it. The main idea uh, we wanted to share through this document was to define the minimum quality on an AHU. 
Um, the quality criteria of an NA2 are described in many standards and laws. It can be very difficult for someone to follow all the rules in the different normative documents that we have. We put in that way all the major information on the state of the art on the European market in this recommendation. Um, the recommendations are related um, to the design, uh, what kind of uh, component and in which row uh, we have to use uh, and install them, um, the materials and the construction that um, uh, we have, how do we as manufacturer have to construct our unit and the documentation and delivery, what document do we have to provide to our uh, customer and what should be done by or after the delivery. So to do that, um, we put a list of uh, the different pertinent, pert uh, pertinent standards and regulations over the different chapter and a scheme. Um, this main focus area like here, the casing are divided in different sub points to focus on each important aspect and to go very deep into the details for those who really want to understand the complexity in um, our product. For each point, uh, your event recommendation is highlighted in green. Those recommendations are not the very minimum of what's possible on the market, but uh, must have to keep an acceptable quality over the whole unit life. Our intention was at the end to have a balance between um, the quality of the information that we uh, share and the ease of use. Uh, of this uh, document. Um, with this document, we reach our goal to support uh, the transparency on the market. Uh, each par paragraph gives a context and background information for an in-depth understanding. Uh, the green highlighted information um, a bullet points shows the essential information. There is also a summary section for an easy and quick use of uh, the document. The most important standard and regulation are summarized uh, with uh, key values and um, um, there is a, a guidance uh, on these uh, key values. Um, the three big subjects that we want to answer in uh, this document and um, from our industry are accessibility and assembly, energy efficiency, durability and maintainability. Um, we use this recommendation to support the main question that we receive all over the years. And in this document, you will find some information on what should be done before the assembly and the consequences if it is not done in a correct way, like the impact on the energy consumption of the unit, on its uh, durability, uh, the impact on the air tightness of the unit uh, that we um, want to keep the air leakage as low as possible, and um, it's a way to enforce the quality of the unit on site. Um, concerning the energy efficient, efficiency, um, there is some information on the current regulations and all the changes that we had in the past uh, in the different uh, regulations. Um, this recommendation is also um, linked to the other uh, Eurovent recommendation that you uh, that we write, um, for example, on the optimal control of the H2 operation, and also in the document was on the durability and maintainability. Uh, we describe how hygiene, place, and safety can have an impact on the lifetime of the unit. Um, the main quality criteria, for example, are the resistance to abrasion for every surface in the unit, uh, not only the casing, but also the um, component in it. Um, also the accessibility for each component uh, with a door, with enough place in the units, etc., et and no sharp metal sheets anywhere in the unit. 
I don't want to expand myself too much on this uh, right now. Uh, my colleague Alcan Yilmaz will give you more detailed information on what to do and uh, not. Alcan, uh, floor is yours. Thanks, Charlene. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Alcan. It's great to uh, see you all here. Uh, in this section, I'd just like to um, take a bit more attention on this maintainability as Charlene explained uh, actually quite well in her slides. Uh, but it's worth to mention once more what maintainability is all about and how it is defined in this uh, recommendation paper and what would be the consequences if we don't pay attention uh, to this uh, from some real life examples as well. Uh, actually, maintainability is all about ensuring that the unit performs properly, meaning safe and efficiently as it's meant to be throughout its uh, lifetime. In this paper, actually, as you can see on the screen, uh, recommendations for maintainability is explained in uh, some important aspects, uh, as mentioned before, hygiene, safety, uh, maintenance intervals, and very importantly, uh, accessibility. So hygiene as a general topic is explained in section 112 uh, of the document. In, in addition to that, uh, as mentioned before, the materials should be uh, resistant to abrasion, emission-free, and uh, microbially not metabolizable. And uh, it's recommended to use metallic materials in the airflow as much as possible, at least avoid plastic. But if plastics used, it must be uh, ISO 846 uh, certified or compliant, let me say. Uh, with uh, against uh, fungi and bacteria reproduction. Uh, for cleaning, of course, every component in the unit should be accessible. I will explain accessibility separately in the next slide. Uh, to clean the unit itself, a neutral cleaning agent or alcohol-based uh, disinfectant should be used uh, in the inner surfaces uh, of the unit and to ensure, of course, safe maintenance uh, the casing and its surfaces should be uh, should not have any sharp uh, metal sheets uh, in in design and production of the unit. This must be uh, really paid attention. And of course, uh, when when it comes to maintenance intervals, not not all functions uh, require the same frequency of maintenance. Maybe, for example, uh, if we think about a unit with humidification, in the recommendation we also explain it that. Uh, the humidification process uh, makes the unit inside humid, which create can create some issues if it's not maintained well in time. And the interval of maximum uh, maintenance should be uh, maximum six months. Uh, if the unit doesn't have any humidification, uh, we can say that it should be maintained an interval of maximum 12 months. Uh, so these are some examples to recommendations and of also depending on if the unit has uh, humidification or not, the uh, in-depth hygienic review of the unit should be done in two or three years, uh, respectively. So if we come to uh, accessibility, which I really like how it's mentioned, uh, how it's explained in the document, uh, every revision area, at first we should say that must be accessible with a proper door uh, openings with uh, like a panel openings with screws are not uh, recommended with, as you can see, the doors with proper handles uh, should be existing on the unit for accessibility. And when it comes to uh, the inspection areas uh, for big, big units, let's say the units higher than 1.6 meter, uh, the revision area should be big enough to let a person enter the unit. Uh, and work properly for such big units. The bent over position is not for the maintenance team. Should uh, is not recommended. It should be avoided. Uh, but as I mentioned, what I like in this recommendation paper is, uh, unlike the other standards uh, defining either AHUs or hygienic uh, arranging units, uh, this paper clearly guides the market on what the access doors and inspection space dimension uh, should be at minimum. Of course, as you can see on the screen as well, uh, it depends on the depth or height of the unit. Uh, and you can see the levels on the right, level one, two, three. 
for standard comfort applications, it's uh, recommended to have level one inspection spaces for the respective unit sizes. And for uh, special applications and higher hygiene requirements, level two and three uh, will be accessible, uh, applicable. So let's look at some real life examples, uh, how a unit should be, how should not be and how it should be. Uh, for example, the one on the left is installed two meter above the ground with no indication where the maintenance should be. And there's no door to access, it uh, requires unscrewing the panels, which all makes the unit, uh, it's dangerous to, uh, uh, to maintain and also uh, probably discourages uh, good maintenance, but uh, the unit should be, if possible, installed at user level with clear indication uh, on the door, uh, inspection windows uh, where necessary to see what's inside, what's needed, how to uh, handle the maintenance, uh, you can plan in a better way, and providing enough access to uh, for, for cleaning and inspection as well. And in this slide, uh, we can see some more real life examples from, for example, a filter section. Uh, on the left top, as you can see, is, there's a slide out filter, uh, which is not airtight, and there's lots of filter bypass, and, and uh, there's no enough access space for cleaning. In such a case, of course, the components coming after the filter will not be protected as expected. And after four years of uh, use, the, for example, a heat recovery device uh, uh, downstream the filter uh, will be clogged uh, even in a non-repairable way, as you can see on the screen, which means uh, there will be no more heat recovery, uh, which is actually quite bad, but also with the pressure drop creating on the uh, coil uh, on the heat recovery device, uh, it will increase remarkably the power input on the fan motors and so on. So uh, this, this is a huge increase in energy, uh, energy consumption uh, and costs. So on the left bottom, you can see the filter clogged at the end of the building with cement and plaster you can see uh, on the photo and the pressure detector is disconnected and so on. And let's imagine, not imagine, you can see on the right, uh, the filter is ripped out of its frame and flew into the fan, uh, which you can see what it uh, results with the destroyed fan and the risk of injury. So these are some real life examples from uh, what it could be if we don't uh, pay attention or implement uh, these kind of recommendations. Coming to the end of my part, focus on, focusing on recommendations on maintenance, uh, we just wanted to make it a bit more visual to show how important it is uh, to follow the recommendations, but uh, as well as maintenance, as my uh, colleagues also well explained, there are many other aspects for an AHU uh, to make it a high quality unit. Uh, we strongly recommend you follow and read this document once and uh, make use of it as much as possible and encourage people uh, to use it uh, in order to select, manufacture and operate and maintain uh, the unit in the most efficient way uh, throughout its uh, lifetime. So I'm, this is the end of my section, uh, leaving the word to my colleague Lawrence. Thank you very much, Rokun. And um, I'd like to move forward. Um, really to say that uh, we really sincerely hope you, you enjoyed this webinar. Our target, and we hope that came through, was really to show the importance of making the right choices and some of the possible consequences of making bad ones. Um, we are heavily responsible um, for a large part of the energy used in, in modern buildings today and strongly believe that we can be an important ingredient in making buildings truly sustainable. Like we said, that's really the direction we want to take in Europe, and I think for anybody who pays for an energy bill, that's something that they um, they really understand. Um, for us, it's really important to have clear requirements and clear specifications um, to ensure uh, proper equipment in the beginning, proper investment, and also, uh, like we showed many, many times today, or at least spoke about performance and sustainability and durability. 
I really hope this has lit an amazing fire of passion um, in everybody for air handling units. And if you'd like to know some more, um, you can follow the link on the left, which will take you directly to the Eurovent Association site. And you'll find um, loads of documents to help you make decisions, understand systems. Like Martin said, if you're starting out in the, in the air handling unit industry or business, it can sometimes be a bit intimidating. So we really hope this will help you. And even for people who've been doing this for decades, there's a lot to learn and a lot to understand because standards and regulations have changed a lot in, in recent years. Um, in the light of that on the right, you can also sign up for our newsletter where you'll get updates on legislation, technologies, events, and, and you can learn so much more. So uh, please sign up for that if you're interested in air handling units. I hope you are because you're here with us today. And obviously follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, it's a great place to keep in touch and, and to know what's happening. So thanks again to everybody. And thanks for everybody who prepared this webinar and also the documents. It's a lot of time on top of their daily work. Okay, yeah, again. Um, I can now hand over back to Martin, who will moderate the question and answer session. We hope you have lots of exciting questions for us. Yeah, again, to support what Lawrence just said and what I said in the early beginning, um, we just represent a complete group and we have so many very active members in product group air handling units. So um, this is a session from product group air handling units to everyone, not only from the four of us, but um, we were happy to, to have your time here. Okay, then it comes to the questions and answers session. So now you can um, ask your questions. Um, one thing that I already see here, that is something that I can answer very, very quickly. One question is, the document seems to be quite long, how to read it. So as Charlene said, and the others also said, there is a quite extensive explanation if you want so, but the, all the recommendations and requirements are um, collected on one page or one and a half page. So for those who want to get more information, you can get this information. If you just want to see point by point the minimal requirements, you will find them there. Good. Then we have another question. I don't know who to answer, who wants to answer that, but I will just read it and then maybe you can decide by yourself. It seems that these requirements make units more expensive. How to convince people to spend more money on that? Is that a question for Lawrence? I don't know. Yeah, I'd happily take that one. It's one we hear a lot. Um, and I understand the concern because air handling units are really expensive pieces of equipment. But what makes us so, let's say, passionate about this is we see that um, the invest phase is only a very, very small part of the total cost of ownership. Um, it really depends on the application, price of energy, but it can be like 5% five, 5 of the total cost of ownership. Um, and a good investment at that phase can have such an impact on energy bills afterwards. The challenge we often see is the budget to invest and the budget to run units is not the same. And that can be very frustrating. Um, we feel sometimes like we're sitting on a, a pot of gold and that if we could really tell people, please give me one euro and I'll hand 50 back to you. Um, so I think that's one of the things that at least animates me a lot in my daily job is to say, let's get that message out there because it's a much better investment than Bitcoin or um, the Dow Jones, honestly. Um, yeah, that would be my answer, Martin. That's great. I would. I often answer when I get this question. At the end, you will pay less because, you, as you said, you have an IA invest, but you will save money in in maintenance and energy efficiency, and also the unit will last longer. Yeah, right. Then we have another question. Um, here, somebody is asking: After this publication and this webinar, how can we use this document in practice, and what would be the risk? of not using this guideline? Maybe somebody else answers, Orkun or Shalene. Yeah, I can answer if you like. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Martin, and, and the participant for the question. I, I uh, find this really difficult, uh, important to discuss. Uh, let me begin like this. This document serves as a guideline, but also as a training material for the market to bring uh, everyone involved uh, to the same level of understanding, in my opinion. Uh, so while we acknowledge the different markets and applications will have specific requirements, uh, in general, we can explain that uh, the paper can serve consultants as a uh, ready-to-use source uh, while shaping the specifications uh, for the projects. And, and uh, customers, of course, will have the opportunity to, to assess whether they are served well or not. 
uh, so it can be used in this way. A uh, risk of not using this is actually we, we, we try to explain a bit uh, in the document, but also uh, the parties will probably in, in, in absence of such a clear guidance or specifications, the parties will have to settle down with the uh, with, uh, copy pasted outdated uh, specification papers with, with containing obsolete information and creating an open playground uh, for, for some, let's say, less professional manufacturers or under economic pressure uh, manufacturers to operate in countries, for example, maybe with no minimum requirements. They can mislead uh, the market and customers and uh, eventually leading to, to poor, poor indoor air quality uh, for individuals and processes. That's, that's uh, how I see it poor energy efficiency and in the end financial loss for all parties so I would strongly suggest uh, following this yeah. yeah thank you for that Orkun I think that was a great answer at the end I think we also can conclude or say that um, all of you and all of us we have a special responsibility because we have to ensure people's life in buildings at least uh, and that they have indoor air climate and of course we have to provide sustainable solutions and that of course comes with some requirements that we need to fulfill so it's not a real risk but at the end it's our responsibility at least from my point of view okay then i have other questions here that's great your one um wonderful guest is asking uh, that are actually two questions not directly linked to the document but i'm pretty sure interesting for everyone and i'm 100% sure that we will find somebody to answer this. Is Eco Design Directive due to be revised? That's the first question. Are the heat recovery ERP 2018 thresholds levels due to increase? Shalin, do you want to say something about that? Um, yes. Um, the first question was about the Is ERP they, Directive, uh, right? Yeah, if it is due to be revised. Um, I think you know more about it, Martin, as, uh, as myself, but um, we, we are working on it uh, in the Eurovent Association to um, have some correction first of the, of the vocabulary that, we, that is um, in the regulation. Um, I think also that the, Euro the European uh, Commission is working on it, Great. Um, but with some delays, right, uh, Martin? Yeah. Um, and an official, official date of a new regulation is not known for now. I think Charlene did it very polite, so I would have said <laughs> Nothing happens at European Commission, but maybe that's also hard to say, but we are waiting for another study that they want to consult. But uh, I think we did our job in the product group and the units. We provide a lot of information together with a complete group and try to have an impact. And um, there are already some papers available for the moment. Improve me if you have an other opinion on that. For the moment, we do not expect higher heat recovery efficiency requirements for the future. We expect a more flexible approach so that in southern regions probably you can even work with less but that's still under discussion i to to give some information about my personal expectations for a time frame i do not expect new requirements going into force before january uh, january 2026 to be honest that's my personal expectations expectation um probably even later because we still wait for the study that will take one year and then there are transition times and so on. So for the moment, um, I would expect the uh, uh, 1st of January, 2026 at the earliest, but probably much later, to be honest, because the focus at European Commission seems to be um, not on this regulation, to be honest. Okay, then we continue further. Um, some more questions. Does the guide provide a list of requirements to specify to achieve compliance with major norms such as VDI 6022? I can answer that, Betty. Uh, um, yes, there is um, 
I would say that the important standards and regulations that we have on the market um, are listed in this uh, recommendation. And um, some um, quality criteria that we as manufacturer um, saw as very important are also listed in it. Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you for that, Charlene. Okay, let me check some further questions. Maybe we can have one more and then we come almost to the end. Uh, where can the document be downloaded? I think I missed this information. Okay, that's easy to do. I go back because that was in um, Lauren's session at the wrap up. So you can um, screen, uh, on the screen now you can see this QR code from the left side. But you can also um, just check on Eurovent's website on Eurovent.eu and I think it's quite easy to find. Otherwise, just put in the Google minimum quality criteria and link units Eurovent and then you will also find it. By the way, we of course also um, would recommend all the other Eurovent recommendations. They are extremely helpful, developed by very professional people and they are free of charge. So um, they are made for all of us for you so that you get the information that you need and that we collect from different standards and so on and develop by experts in the field of air and units. Good, then um, maybe one more question. Um, okay, is there any document with recommendations to external issues that might have huge impact in air handling units performance? So, um, what is meant here, I think, is related to other documents, maybe on controls and internal leakages or all other aspects that in somehow are linked to energy efficiency. Um, maybe somebody of you wants to say something about that, Robert? Sorry, I'm on mute. I, I think they all are, Martin. Um, the drive of the of the product group is towards energy efficiency. We're lucky to be in Europe. Uh, Europe wants better air quality for for people, occupants of buildings, and um, you know, to, to to go towards net zero buildings, so really, really energy performant buildings. So I think everything we try to do is to help people aim for that, um, be it air leakage, which I personally feel is a very, very important aspect of air handling units, maintenance, the right choices, how does heat recovery impact total cost of ownership. These are all, I mean, in, 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 in ingrained in all of these documents. So I would suggest anybody who's interested in that takes a read through, selects their language of choice, and air handling units and just looks at the different documents because there's so much already there. Um, and I think in the future, we're all going to come up with more. Um, we had many questions about if I make this choice, what is the impact on my total cost of ownership? It's a complicated question, um, yeah. but we're already working on that within your event association. And I hope we'll be able to share the results of that in the near future because it's, it's mind boggling when you see the, the impact, it's, it's absolutely massive. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for that, Lawrence. And also come back to the, um, remember the slide in the early beginning with all the position papers. And uh, as uh, Lawrence said, all our topics mainly deal with energy efficiency. So at the end, they do. And also we, of course, have the paper related to controls and leakages and so on, where you find extremely helpful, helpful information for uh, ensuring, um, let's say, a specific effectiveness for your solution that you want to design or build in the building. Good. So then I would say, since time is um, almost at the end, I would go to the last slide again, because if you have additional questions related to the content of our documents or related to this web seminar or where you can find documents and so on, here you have the contact information. Here is the website. You can see the mail address of Eurovent Secretary and also the phone number, follow us of LinkedIn. And I'm um, sure you will find a way to contact us and I'm pretty sure that we are all looking forward to receiving your questions and hopefully being able to answer them afterwards. 
So then I would say we are at the end of the web seminar or webinar. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thanks to uh, Lawrence, Charlene, and Orkun, and again to Igor and Ngoni and, um, and Andrea. Please excuse the problems in the early beginning. So, you know, we are handling unit experts and not webinar experts. Maybe we have to develop a minimum, minimum quality requirements document for doing webinars, but I'm pretty sure for the next time we will perform again better and I guess the record will be perfect at the end. Maybe we will record this session separately again. Anyway, stay safe, have a wonderful time for those who celebrate Christmas, enjoy the Christmas time and for all the others stay safe, healthy and we are really looking forward to meeting you next time in the webinar at an exhibition or somewhere around. <laughs>